Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsene of all, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can use some tips and tricks to get the most out of the Just Paddle add-on. So after the first video talking about the Just Panels add-on, I've had a number of people have conversations with me about just how fun this add-on is, but since then I have been spending some time playing around with it, and I thought I'd share some really cool tips and tricks on how you could use this. If you haven't got Just Panels yet, there's a link in the top right hand corner in the description. This is also going to use hard ops and box cutter quite a lot, but I will say that you don't need to use those for all of this, it just makes everything a lot faster. There's a link to that in the description as well, and also now coming up in the top right hand corner. They are affiliate links, so it does give some money towards the channel if you do it, but let's get straight into this and have a look at what we can do. So, the first thing should be fairly obvious, but I thought I'd point it out, which is if we use Just Panels to create some 3D panels like we've just done here, because this this is non-destructive, we've got everything in the stack so you can see what it does here to make this work. This does combine really well with hard ops if I press Q and go to face extract. I've got that as a quick favourite, you can see a link to a video in the top right hand corner about how to set up these quick favourites, but you can get there by going to mesh tools and face extract as well. But what that allows you to do is do things like select the panels that are just there and then for example I could press space, click and then I could extrude that up if I then press A, so I can have thicker panels there. And then likewise, I could come to this one, so Q, face extract, select it, space, and then click, and then I could extrude that down. Which is really fun, because it means that you've got these panels of different heights going on, and because you can make all of these visible, and you could, for example, use Everscroll or this to go back into it, you can do things like select that and select that, and then you can still G, Shift, Z, and you can still move these around as long as you've selected both with that dips down panel or your increased panel here. So a lot of fun can be had with that just to make panels that you can actually do and make a little bit more interesting like sticking out. Now this next one's because I wanted to be able to make things like the panel lines you sort of find of aircraft where they're all joined together. If you think about that last example, each one of the panels was a separate bit, but sometimes you want them all interconnecting. And I sort of had to have a think about how to do this, and I have to be honest, I haven't tested this in every situation to know that this works, and there are some tricks to it. So what I'm going to do is bring in a cube, and I'm going to S to scale this up and then S and Shift Z to make it really big, so something like that. Now, if I just demonstrate this quickly with the Make 3D panel, this has got a load of settings that we can access once we've done it here. Oh, I didn't apply the scale, so that's gonna look awful. Let's do that again. But if I click here, we've got all of these options, and importantly, as was covered in the first video on Just Panel, we can set these up afterwards, or if I undo everything, we can go to Edit, Preferences, add-ons, come to our just panels, have a look at it, and we've got all of these default options. Now, for this to work well, you're going to want to have these two options, your bevel size in and bevel size out, set to zero, and importantly, these two, your gap in and gap out, you want to have set to the same value, but the in being a minus and the out being a positive. So I've got mine both set at 0 0.5 because I want a total panel line thickness of one millimeter. These added together, so half and half equal a millimeter, ignore the minus. So what this is doing, if we just look at one panel by itself, is if I come into the top down view, and let's zoom in, and I'm gonna use my annotate tool to draw where this line is. If I then shift click and make 3D panel, what you can see this has done is this has created, apologies for the very not flat line, is that we've got the inside panel is half a millimetre inside, and the outside panel is half a millimetre outside of where the original line was. And if it wasn't for this function, for the make panel 3D printable, this, what we're going to do next, wouldn't work. So we can't do it with any of the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this up. Now, there are some tricks to this. I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't understand why I have to do this, but I've played around with this and I know that I do to make this work. So if anyone does know, please feel free to say it in the comments. So I'm going to Alt and W to open up Box Cutter, press D, and I'm going to go to the Slice option. And what that means I can do is, with my object that's going to make the panels, I can just slide and click, and I slice my object in half. Now, obviously, you could slice your object in half any way you want, but it's important that you're cutting it in half and everything's next to each other perfectly. 
Now, this is the bit I don't understand, but for each of these, I need to apply these. So I can either just click on it and apply and apply, or you could use hard ops to press Q and then go to operations and smart apply, which if you followed my previous videos, link in the top right hand corner. If you set to quick favorites, you can make very quick by just pressing Q and Q. And then I'm gonna, let's say, slice this one in half and then smart apply and then smart apply and then let's slice this one in half as well and then smart apply and then smart apply like i said i don't know why i have to do that but it doesn't seem to work very well if i don't and if i then w to come out of box cutter and select all of these cubes making sure the one we want to put the panel lines last is the last one to select and click make panel 3d printable you'll notice that this is going to cut everything but what's really cool is that all of the lines line up because they're all set to go the same distance. If you think about it, the original line between the two objects was here, and then each one's gone half a millimeter either side, which means that this is perfectly on top of each other. Hopefully that makes sense. So what that means is we've got all of these panels nicely joined together like they would be on an aircraft. And again, if we really want to, we can queue and mesh tools and face extracts and if we want to we can select one of the faces and make it thicker or whatever it depends on how well your aircraft is built i guess and let's come back to our original cube so our ability to do that works because we can manipulate some of the functions that's in this make panel 3d printable specifically that we've got a gap on the inside and the outside of the original object now for this next one we don't want that so we're actually going to use one of the other functions we're going to make use of the function of the make panel 2d now if you follow the other just panel video you'll know that if 3d printing matters to you then this isn't going to make something that's perfectly 3d printable straight away so we're going to have to do something with that so what i'm going to do is shift and d to make a duplicate of this cube and then i'm going to press h to hide it we'll come back to that later it's not particularly important at this point and if you don't intend on 3d printing then it's not important at all what we're going to do then to use this one we need to create a plane so shift a mesh and i'm going to bring in a plane i'm going to scale that up and i need this to be above the object let's say somewhere around there and then i'm going to control an a and apply the scale because we always apply the scale because it's really bad form not to then we're going to shift click and i'm going to click make panels 2d and this isn't gonna work or looks like it's not gonna work because I've got my panel depth really, really shallow, which I don't know why I've done that. So let's increase that up. So we've got this panel here or panel line. Now, importantly, this works in a different way. As I said, if I come to top down view, you can see instead of having gap on both the inside and the outside, it only has a gap that functions inwards. But because of that, I'm gonna put that back to one millimeter, it gives us this even gap option. And it's very important that we have that for this to work. Now, importantly, I've also put the bevel size down to zero because again, it just works a little bit better with it down to zero. Uh, you can do it without it turned down to zero, but you'll just need to be a little bit more careful with it. So the important bit about this is if I come to toggle stack here, you can see we've got all of these modifiers working. Essentially, this add-on works by adding lots of modifiers in a specific order and having a very nice way of us being able to manipulate it. And each one of these does different things with a different set of modifiers. So I guess in theory, you could set this up yourself, but it would take you forever every time. And that just seems annoying. So I'd say that it's well worth the money, especially when you can start doing things like this. And because it's all still modifiers, what's great is we can press G and we can still move this around. It's still live. And it also means we can introduce new things to modify this further. For example, if I press Alt and W to open up box cutter again, if we press D and then we change it to Engon and turn it to be not cyclic, you can also do that up here. What we can do is if I come to top down view, you will want to come to top down view because of the way the Engon line works. I can do something like that, that, and then let's say that. And I can also press T to change the thickness if I want to. We're just gonna go with that, double click. And then I've cut my panel, which means that I'm gonna do funky things with my panel lines, except it hasn't quite worked the way that I wanted to. You can see it's cut the panel. You can see this from the lines here, but it hasn't actually extended onto the make panels part. And that's because over here on my modifier stack, you can see that my Boolean is there and we actually need this somewhere else. So I can just drag this up to be at this point, let go, and then it's going to work. Now, this works again nicely because of the even gap. If I turned off the even gap, 
you sort of get some differences in thicknesses here, so it looks much better with the even gap. So great, we can manipulate this as much as we want and we can make all these extra panels. Now what's more handy about this, because of the way box cutter works and how customizable it is, we can actually not have to do this each time. If I go to edit, preferences and find box cutter and then open that up, you can see we've got this automatic sorting of modifiers. And what we did is we dragged this Boolean up so it was above this world modifier and it was above these two solidify modifiers. So if I just set those, to automatically being sorted and then save my preferences if you need to save your preferences and then close this. So now I can just do these well, wherever I want and it will automatically do it in the right place. So we can make these really cool looking panels really fast without having to take ages setting up each of the different panels that we want. Now there are two more things that I want to mention. Let's go through them in order. The first is I mentioned this isn't perfectly 3D printable you will see that there is basically a cutout at the bottom here which we don't want. Now this is very easy to manipulate, all we need to do is bring back our cube that we've got here, select it and then if I go to x-ray mode and just G and Z that down so it's slightly above that bit that we don't want, I can then select that, control and minus and importantly uh, because of the way that we've just manipulated everything I'm going to have to bring that all the way down to the bottom for it to work. So do bear in mind, you might want to change your box cutter settings back after you do this, otherwise you might have some annoyances in the future. Okay, but now if I do that and press QQ, Smart Apply, and then let's shade that flat, we've got all of these panels just the way that we want. And I've just realized that my cavity has been turned off, so this probably looks awful. There we go, that's much easier to see. So there we go, we've got these really nice, quick, easy to make panel lines. Now I'm just going to go back a little bit because I do want to discuss one thing. I don't know if this is going to matter to you, but I do want to talk about it so that you know. Now because of the limits of the way this function works using this gap and then having our even gap because of the solidify modifiers, one of the things that you should know about solidify modifiers is this even gap works very well with any sort of corner that is at least 90 degrees. So this inside corner is 90 degrees, that's more than 90 degrees, that one is well way more than 90 degrees, in fact it's more than 180. So you'll notice all of these are 90 degrees or more, and that's really important for getting these perfectly even. Now this might not matter to you, it depends on how much of a pedant you are, I'm a massive pedant, so to me this makes a difference and this is why I want to tell you so that you know everything that's going on. So if I press Alt and W and we've got my end gone line and I do this cut here, and you'll notice that this is just here, less than 90 degrees, you'll notice that this even gap, although it's pretty good, is not completely perfect. Now, you do really have to look for this to actually see this. So if I just bring this cube up and then G and bring that to the top of this line that's just here, you can see that for this one, it hasn't exactly perfectly kept to the same thickness. This is not something that's a problem with the add-on, it is an issue with the way the solidify modifier works, and it's relatively easy to rectify. All you're gonna have to do is once you've applied the modifier, go in, select those vertices, and align them with the other vertices that are on that line. You can do that in seconds with machine tools. There's a link in the top right-hand corner if you wanna have a look at how to do that. As always, I hope that's useful. I think it's gonna give you some things to think about and some things to potentially play with. And it is definitely gonna speed up your life if you're gonna be using this for panel lines in the future. So let me know what you think. Maybe you've found some other tricks with just panels that I haven't found yet and you want to say in the comment section and help the community out. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe. And if you want more great content straight away and you're watching this on YouTube, if you join the Patreon, which is linked in the description, then you will get more videos ahead of time. You can also join the higher tier, which means that you get access to all the STLs that I create and files that I create over the course of the month. Have a great day, guys.